it is. Ray is so nice. Yeah, I did. It, it is really very helpful, Ray. Thank you so much for for putting the uh, agenda links into the um, into the uh, 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 email, so I don't have to 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 fumble around as much as I might. Um, all right, uh, we've called the meeting to order. Uh, we need to discuss adjustments to the uh, agenda. Carl. I was wondering if there was any update on the labor negotiations and didn't know if that necessarily needs to be a, a agenda item or if. Um... Uh, I was going to, uh, uh, if it didn't come up in Jamie's uh, uh, superintendent's report, I was going okay. to mention it in board comment. Thank you. Uh, Bonnie, Lindy, Jamie, uh, any administrative uh, changes that are needed? Okay. Um, Ethan, uh, you've been our timekeeper in the past. Do you want to do that again? If yes, you if I can find a um, piece of paper. Uh, I guess this will have to do. Okay. Go for it. Uh, okay. We have a uh, consent agenda that hopefully we can take care of in uh, five minutes. Uh, I would allocate... Uh, Five minutes for the for the board comment. Um, how long uh, do uh, the various reports think they're going to require? Ten. So so six point one. Jamie goes ten. <laughs> yeah, I think we can do all of them in ten. You can do all of them in ten. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so ten questions for reports to the board. Um, your COVID updates. Give us another 10. Okay. Um, reviewing the uh, document and report you sent out about the, the, the uh, thoughts on the building maintenance, the high school building, I would think that'd be 15 maybe. Yeah. Uh, SEL data, social emotional data. 10 to 15. Okay. Um, I think the vacant... The, the, seven two. What's seven two? Uh, seven two is the uh, winter maintenance building. No, I just what what was the time for it, please? Oh, we said fifteen. Thank you. And then I think uh, it'll just be in public session. It'll just be uh, just a couple minutes on the uh, interim board member and the November vote. Um, I'm assuming that the new hires is just a, is 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 just a, an approval of, of a thing. So probably five minutes, Jamie. The quick update, and that's just a note to you guys. A person's going to work in your building, but they're not an actual RSUD employee. They'll be a WRVSU employee. Huh. Okay. So so that's real easy. That's just, so just a couple minutes on that, and then in the executive session, we have the uh, attorney attorney client uh, communications that you I think is probably also an email on. Uh, if not, we'll brief you in the meeting, uh, as well as we have the uh, a report from the uh, the four board members that uh, were in the special um, interim board member uh, interview meeting uh, earlier tonight. And so we will brief you on that in a second executive session. Um, uh, so I guess we have 11.1 and 11.2. Probably the attorney one is going to take 5 to 10, and the uh, board discussion, the, the interim uh, uh, the personnel discussion will probably take 15. And I think that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Uh, that said, uh, the consent agenda, um, I'm going to turn this over to, uh, to Jenny to update us on which minutes we're looking at and which ones we're approving. Um, I believe that they're all the ones that are listed because at the um, the last meeting, the July minutes weren't in the package. Okay. All right. So uh, do we want to discuss them as a slate or do we want to uh, uh, go through them individually? Slate. Slate. 
I would entertain a motion to approve the uh, uh, slate of minutes as uh, have been distributed. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, okay, we'll go through and we'll do a quick roll call. Uh, Amy? Aye. Ethan? Aye. Jenny? Aye. Megan? Darn. Vote no. Is she there? Megan? Uh, aye. Sorry, took also, a second to get the uh, slate of uh, the consent agenda carries unanimously. Um, so let's uh, go through the reports for the board and and, and uh, then have board comment after that. So in case there's anything we want to uh, uh, instruct or or, or do uh, based on what our administration tells us. So let's start with Jamie. Um, so you guys have my report in hand. I'll just add that um, as far as negotiations go, I'm going to be pulling the negotiation committee together a week from Monday um, to do some work. And um, both we are moving uh, to impasse both with our support staff and professional staff at this time. And right now we're working on settling on an arbitrator. So. And are we, it, do, do we have any uh, uh, guidance yet or information on whether we'll, we'll be able to use the, uh, um, the, the, the no cost federal mediator option or if we're, we're, we're going to be- uh, I believe that that's, that's the direction we're trying to head and um, just make certain they're available and be able to secure that. Um, the other things I'll let you know is that we got the sad news that uh, CBS won't be able to join us this week. They were going to uh, film and uh, do a story on uh, 60 and 6 on our approach to opening for in-person instruction um, with a focus on how we're training teachers up um, to provide instruction outdoors, um, to be able to focus on core content area instruction in the outdoor setting and the professional development that occurred in order for that to happen. Um, they had another story come up um, that they had to cover. So they're hoping to maybe come back later in the fall and still do a story on the work that we've done across the WRVSU to open five days a week. Um, they were really intrigued. So that's exciting and I hope that, I'm hopeful that that still can occur. I've got to put a shout out there to all the faculty, staff, administrators. Uh, I've been touring buildings throughout the in-service days and the it's been very positive, it's been upbeat. Uh, folks, of course, are anxious um, about September 8th, but um, they really come together in regards to uh, a we system. And I think many hands are making light work. And I also want to put a shout out there to Lindy, who's doing a terrific job with the WRE VSU Virtual Academy. And so to that end, as I said, we were going to approach this virtually. Um, we had a teacher at um, ARSA that's going to be teaching in the Virtual Academy. And therefore, the SU then has secured a long-term sub who's licensed that we will use CARES money for to fill in um, in that teaching position. And that candidate is listed on your um, agenda. And Bonnie can give you some details about that. We were, it, we're, I'm very excited that we were able to bring Megan on board. Um, she's a terrific hire as a long-term sub. And um, she's gonna do really good work at the Rochester campus. And I'll entertain any other questions folks have. I, I had a question. Um, a, a while ago, they were talking about um, at the state level um, about the um, homeschooling impact um, on the ADM. And I just didn't know if the state had, um, if, sorry, my dog's barking in the background. If the state had, um, if you've heard anything from the state about around that ADM and the, and the homeschoolers. Yes, yeah, so I've been following that closely um, in the legislative reports. Um, there's been lobbying occurring around the VSA, um, VSBA, and also the Secretary of Ed told the school homeless that their equalized pupils will not drop below the 1920 equalized pupil number. And I, think, I do believe that that's going to gain traction. Um, and so that uh, schools will be held harmless for families that chose to homeschool this year, that they be 
equalized pupil wouldn't drop below what we're currently operating with. I'm also awaiting uh, legislation. There's been support to drop the student based on 170. Um, and a while back, I asked the SU board permission to be flexible with those days and the union agreed. So the idea was that we would bank those five days in the event that we have to hit the pause button for in-service needs um, because we just realize we're not getting something right based on feedback we received from our families and our students. Um, so that right now we are scheduled to go 175. That would be the plan um, unless we need to hit the pause button. Um, just a quick technical note to anybody listening. If you could please pause, um, mute. Just there is some feedback and sometimes it's hard to hear um, people talking. So if you can just mute, what's it stars? Star six. Star six on the phone lines. If you could just mute so that way we can really hear the person who's commenting clearly. Thank you. Uh, there we go. Much better, thank you. Um, and then the other thing I'll add is that the SU board last night uh, did provide permission. Uh, we're going to do some restructuring in the SU offices um, in our budget proposal for October for 21-22. Um, um, and we're also going to be posting for some additional support um, in the SU business office. Um, and so we're going to be posting an associate business manager that we've been able to secure funds enough to cover most of the salary. Um, but we've also found several um, savings in regards to special ed staffing that will help offset some of those costs. So I don't foresee it putting us in the red. Um, but this person would be focused on overseeing food service, but also assisting Tara with day-to-day -day oversight of the business office um, and to be able to better uh, split those duties up across two folks. Um, to ensure that we're able to provide you guys the data and information you need um, in real time to make informed decisions, specifically as we changed our budgeting practices and timeline for the upcoming um, year. So we're excited about that too. So that job will get posted in the next day or two. Does anyone else have a uh, superintendent? Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, our principal's report. Uh, any, I don't think there's any additions though. You may have heard Ethan and I talking earlier. <clears throat> Thankfully, we set our tents up early before students arrived to allow teachers to have time to work in those outdoor classroom settings as we go through in-service. And we learned, uh, they have to be on level ground and high winds is not ideal. We've since um, solved that problem and are continuing to add some more supports to make it even more secure. There's been a lot of people, Ethan has definitely led the charge and we're very grateful with that. Um, and teachers are really excited about that space. Um, I have some pictures I can send as they've started to make it, you know, their classroom. So it's cool to see. We're seeing a similar trend. We're, <clears throat> we're about a day or a day and a half behind Stockbridge in terms of getting a solution in. I know Ethan's been trying to connect with me by phone and it's been two busy days, but our teachers are also very much excited about those outdoor spaces. Um, they've been out there imagining the kinds of things that they're going to have ready when, uh, when youngsters start school on Tuesday. Um, one other thing I will draw your attention to in the principal's report, um, I had mentioned that we were changing the uh, preschool model at Rochester because we had 14 four-year-olds, which would have left virtually one space for a three-year-old to attend preschool. And we've talked ever since I've been here about the board's desire to not turn away any preschool youngsters. So we changed the model, um, split it into two groups, and I'm glad that we did that because in the last two days, two new three-year-olds have, have surfaced. So we have room for them to attend um, the preschool program. So that will give us uh, 17 youngsters in preschool altogether, which is a, which is a very healthy number for us. Um, I guess that's all I will say at this point.
Um, you guys mentioned in your second bullet on the uh, HVAC systems that there was a uh, um, a, a, a twelve thousand um, dollar need for a, a a ventilation unit, a repair to the to the preschool. Yes, um, we had. I'm sorry. I mean, are, are we? We, is this something we need to put out to bid? Is Tara putting the, I mean, because it's $12,000, right? We have to, we have to bid it. Let me, let me just back up one step, Carl. That came okay. about as a result of the engineer that, that Jamie and Tara set up to have a check the ventilation system in the two schools. In our preschool, we have a, a need for additional fresh air as we do in the gym. The, the $12,000 figure was the engineer's estimate for uh, rectifying the issue in the in the preschool, that uh, we believe will be covered uh, totally by the uh, grant funds that the state of Vermont's making available to schools to improve ventilation. Uh, we will have a temporary that will not be able to be in before school starts. We'll have a temporary fix, just using good old fans and open windows for the first week or so of school until we can get a handle on the timeline for that uh, installation of that unit. But again, we believe that all the work that's been done in the two schools to date, plus this uh, replacement of this or installation of this unit in preschool should be covered with grant funds. Right, but the board, so you do not need the board to make a motion to get the bid, the bidding process or to authorize this, the business manager to go get the- My understanding is no after talking to efficiencies from Ockrell because they're trying to fast track these as much as possible. In Carl, the bid law is 15,000. 15, ah, see, I always thought it was 10. Maybe you know, I'm just cheap. Um, <laughs> we so, recommend that you, you know, in our I, policy, we recommend that multiple quotes are obtained, but you don't have to go out to public bid unless it's over 15,000 and emergency repairs are exempt from that also, just an okay. FYI. And, and you know, the, the, the big piece here was I wanted to make sure that the administration had whatever board source of blessing the administration needed from us so that, you know, from, from a selfish point of view, I don't have to have a special meeting next week um, uh, open evening, but also just to make sure that you guys can get it done as an, in, in as timely a way as possible and you don't have to stop and say, oh, crap, we need a special meeting for the board to do X, Y, or Z. I you like know, the state's considering the these emergency fixes with the access. Excellent. Does anyone else have questions for the principals based on uh, their September report? Just letting you know we're a little over time now. Okay, hearing none, um, let's move to uh, the business manager's report, Tara. I will keep mine brief, just give you an update. Jamie already shared that we will be posting for an associate business manager position. We're very excited about that. Currently, the business office is working on FY20 fiscal year closure and wrap up for our FY20 audit process. And the full board at Two meetings ago, I believe it was approved the budget calendar for FY 21-22, so you've all seen that. And we'll be working with you all to start establishing your budgets in pieces rather than all in one lump, sum, one lump workbook like we have in the past, which will make the budgeting process a lot easier. Wonderful. The Agency of Education um, issued an extension on our annual stat book reporting they have now moved it to September 15th, so we'll be working on that next week to get that finalized. We got notification today that um, the USDA has extended the option of using the summer food service program to provide meals to all of our kiddos. So we are working through that process right now and we'll most likely be moving to that option. So more information to come once we have the final details available for that. We'll be sending out notices to the administrators and the food service. And then if we move forward with it, Jamie would be issuing notification to families. I don't know, Jamie, if you wanna add anything else to that comment. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. So just so the board knows what that means is we can get reimbursed for all any and all meals served for those 18 and under. 
um, which should really support our food service program. And as you know, um, we're hopeful that more students will then partake and eat. Um, and I'm hopeful that that actually will support us to better ensure we're not running such deficits in food service for the upcoming year. Um, while we work to, to get our food service budgeting and things in order to ensure that we're not incurring deficits to food service as we move forward in 21 to 22. So that should help us a great deal. Great. It will be good. One thing more to come on that. Tomorrow, our applications are due to the state for the Corona Relief, Coronavirus Relief Funds and the um, ESSER funds, which is a separate pot of money. And then we received guidance that FEMA is also going to be providing funds. So I will be working on getting all of that detail finalized today. Jamie, Cynthia, and I met for the majority of the afternoon, going over our plans, current expenditures, and future needs. The Corona Relief Funds are only available through December. So we want to use those funds prior to using the other pots of money that the state has set aside for us, including the ESSER funds. And then I had one more thing, what was it? Oh, as far, I've received a lot of questions regarding um, reporting your approved budget to the Agency of Education. I have to wait 30 days from the date that your budget passed in order to allow time for reconsideration petitions to be filed. So I cannot file your budget report to the Agency of Education until September 11th. So once that report is filed with the Agency of Education, they do their stuff with it, they check it, process it, then it goes to the tax department and the tax department will then notify your respective towns of what your tax rate is for your revised tax bills to go out. So I wanted to just make sure you all were aware of that because I've received, received several inquiries as to your tax rates. Thank you, I appreciate you explaining that. You back. Yeah. And um, then lastly, one more before, I can't also enter your budgets until that timeline is up. So the administrators and administrative assistants are experiencing an infinite visions when they're requesting stuff that you have no budget for this because until your budget is officially approved after that 30 day window, we don't have an approved budget per se. So once that is that window is up, you will also then see your budget into infinite visions. Now is the budget entered into, into infinite vision and it'll just be published or go live? on that date or does that mean that on September 11th when there hasn't been a reconsideration vote uh, or September 12th for example that's when you'll sit down and just start you know uh, keystroking in the information or cutting and pasting in the information or uploading the information however that process works. I will be entering it after September 11th so September or late September 11th when the close of business happens because I per the auditors we cannot once you put your approved budget in, you can't adjust it. You then have to do budget adjustments and you want your approved budget to be the budget that's in your system so that um, all of your expenditures flow through to what that approved budget was by your towns. Right, and you don't have to, you don't have to be looking at that. Okay, no, I just was trying to, to, to get a handle on what that, what that window meant. Another End thing, of next <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. End of next week. Yep, that's fine. Um, the thing I wanted to add to what uh, the, the the food service cost conversation, uh, I wanted to to mention a thing that did come uh, that that was uh, discussed in last night's um, SU meeting, which was that one of the things that Jamie is targeting, um, and I'm stealing his thunder on this, but one of the things he's targeting for that associate business manager to do is to spend a good portion of time working on managing food service and taking that load off Tara's plate and also just trying to bring some order and some rigor to, uh, 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 to that process so that hopefully, you know, we will be seeing, uh, a, you know, a much better handling of our, of our budget going forward. Um, question for Tara, and this actually is for Jamie too. Um, that really good 
presentation you did at the full board meeting about savings that you'd found um, and also the deficits with the food service. Uh, is that information that wasn't a public meeting? So I, I, I think it'd be very useful to get that out somehow, whether it's an article or something. Just I, I wanted to have it just to send it on to my fellow board, my other board members. Um, but uh, I, I just thought that was very, very useful information as far as um, the changes you're going to be making in, in board uh, in the SU structure and things like that, that we have that as backup. Thanks, Ethan. I actually reached out to the Valley News today and said I'd like to do an interview with them about the current WRVSU finances um, at the SU level and throughout the district. Yeah, I see it was linked. I just, you know, I, I, again, I just, that, that's the kind of information that we all went, wow, look at that. That's so clear. That kind of information getting out to our public is very, very useful, I think. Shows that we're thinking about the things that they've been talking to us about. Um, well, that would also be good to put into the Herald. Um, I think that's something regionally that this area reads a little bit more than the Valley News. Thank you. Yeah, no, I agree, Megan. That was just, I started with them because I was in an interview with them. So I said, hey, by the way, there's another article I'd like you to do. Truthfully, I thought that both local papers, due to the fact that Orca was on that call, would have reached out to me by now, and they haven't. I think because care, they're very... Um, interested in covering COVID right now and schools reopening. But my plan is to get articles in both papers. There's also the Mountain Times. Thank you. Good, thank you. Um, and Tara, just one clarification. What is infinite vision? It's an incredibly amazing uh, phrase. <laughs> it's our software program that we use, Ethan, to track all of our budgets, expenditures, revenue. It's what we no use for all the member so districts. <laughs> no wonder everything's going so well. I I had a question for Tara. Is she there? Yep. Okay. Um, I noticed uh, in I think this was in the presentation that was uh, provided. Uh, it was a financial report uh, provided to the SU at the eight twenty four meeting. I noticed that in it you had stated that you were going to be um, providing monthly expenditure reports, and I just was wondering, um, was that in specific to the um, to the SU budget, or was that also at the district level that you would be providing those as well? It will be at the district level as well, Amy. Similar to what I provided you last year, the PDF yep. document in the Excel workbook. We will continue to provide them, but they're going to be encompassed in my monthly business manager's report. And since I was on vacation prior to your meeting, you didn't get an actual written report from me for this meeting. So I will send that out to you all and your principals separately for the month of September. But then moving forward from October on, that will be included in my monthly business manager's report for your board meetings. And you can't really generate that report right now because you don't have a budget in, in your infinite vision that uh, uh, we can match expenses up against, right? I can generate the report, Carl. It will just show that everything is overspent at this point because there is no budget in there. So, sorry, I, I, my, uh, my computer dropped me. Um, thank you, Tara. Um, I am concerned, though, um, just that our board for the majority of the uh, next year meets on the first of the month. Are we still going to be able to have these reports even though we are meeting so early in the month? Yes. Okay. It'll Thank just you. be up to the date that I generate the report. Right, because like our December meeting is again on December 1st. Yeah, so it would be through the AP run, the last AP run prior to me generating the report in November. Got it. Thank you very much. Any other questions for Tara? Okay, I think, let's see, which tab is it? Not that one. I can close the principal's report now. Um, policy committee. I think what we uh, need to talk about there is there are three po the three policies that the policy committee would like our input on, which are around uh, board superintendent relationships. It's policy A24, public complaints, 
public complaints about personnel B-22 and budgeting F-30. I am not sure if I'm the only person that has those because I'm on the policy committee or if you all, you guys all have those. But the idea is, is what Mary Ellen is asking for is um, some feedback from us as to what we think of those policies to try to kind of shorten that, you know, um, policy comment uh, revision uh, cycle and to try to keep, to try to get all the input from all the different um, district boards uh, taken, taken into account in the SU level policy so that we don't have a, a, a RSUD policy and a FUD policy and everyone else is covered by the WRVSU policy. We're trying to to, to, to to as much as possible get our input taken into account into the policies when they're adopted at the S, SU level rather than us making our own policy um, after the fact. So, Are you able to send those to us then so we can review them? Um, yeah, I can, I, I can forward that forward or, uh, um, yeah, oh, yeah, Ray, Ray right there Ray, links in. You are awesome, Ray. You are links incredible. in the chat. So, um, uh, you can be able to open them from there or if, uh, uh, you close them and you need them again, uh, reach out to me and I'll, I'll, I'll forward them on. It's A22, A24, B22 and F30. Correct. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Um, You're admitted in that agenda, just so you know. Okay. Right Great. Thank you. Oh, cool. Um, so we're moving into uh, 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 item number seven, discussion items. Uh, we have uh, a quick uh, COVID-19 update. Yeah, so I'm going to turn it over to the principals. They've been working really hard on logistics um, at the building level. And then Lindy could give a quick update on where we're at with the Virtual Learning Academy. Lindy, why don't you go ahead? I'll follow you. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we've spent at least a portion of every in-service day since last Thursday just discussing logistics uh, around keeping our kids and our staff safe as we return to in-person learning. As you can imagine, it's uh, a big topic on everybody's mind, which means great questions come up as we start to figure things out. Um, today, we probably looked like a large herd of pick your favorite animal, moving from spot to spot as we were walking through our, our morning routine and what that's gonna look like at Stockbridge when people arrive in the morning and where we need to have adult eyes to really support what we're trying to teach kids with the check-in process in terms of hand washing and dropping their stuff off and temperature checks. Um, and we did the same thing for what it would look like when we come off the bus, as well as end of the day pickup and transitioning to one planet at 1.30. So we literally walked through as a pack of adults and said, if I'm a kindergartner, what does this look like for me? If I'm a fifth grader, what does this look like for me? To try and anticipate anything that we're not um, thinking of. And a lot of that just has to do with eyes on kids to make sure that they don't uh, lollygag down the hallway, so to speak, or get lost in transition. Uh, not that it's a very long hallway, but you never know. And <clears throat> also, we just talked about expectations and routines we're teaching kids when we're transitioning from inside to out, outdoor learning and vice versa, as well as recess and all those fun areas. Um, we are doing on Friday, <clears throat> Ms. Janet and I will be at school. We've asked parents to sign up for times to come and get their like welcome packet, which has the health screening form and things like that. When we started to put it all together, it was a lot to mail. Um, so we've shared a lot of information out with families. Uh, and in Stockbridge, we had a community meeting last week that was fairly well attended with some great ideas from parents to problem solve some things as well. And all parents have had access to that video at this point as well. So I think that's the summary of it. Everybody's six feet apart indoors with masks. That's the other thing. We are able to make that work. So I would say that we were doing almost exactly the same things with the different twists. Uh, we spent part of every day, as Lindy said, going over some aspect or another of our reopening plan. The other thing that Lindy and I built into the in-service schedule for folks is just time 
to get comfortable, time to come back into the building and realize that uh, you're going to be okay, that there's a number of things in place that are different, but those things all point towards um, just keeping our staff, ourselves, our youngsters safe. Uh, we spent a lot of time outside on the soccer field. We had some circle meetings out there. Uh, one of the things that came up is we wondered why we hadn't done this pre-pandemic. Why do we always meet in the gym when we've got this great place outside that we could meet in? So uh, we made that realization. Um, there was also a good deal of work done around literacy, mathematics, and um, the fact that though children feeling safe and comfortable is our number one priority, we still have to continue to teach. We, we, we can't go on coast. Um, in terms of youngsters' academic development. So teachers were having some um, spirited discussions around how to bring um, all the academic pieces to the outdoors. Amy Braun did a nice piece for us on walking through the forest. We call it our forest. It's a little growth area out in back of, uh, of Rochester, and she did some activities out there, um, bundling sticks and, and writing in the sand and um, just all kinds of great ways to take our proficiencies and our academic focal points right outside in, into nature. I'd like to add to something that Lindy said and give a, um, a, a heartfelt thanks to um, Ethan. He really did spearhead our tent outdoor environment. There's other folks that helped. I understand that. I'm very grateful to them, too. But Ethan's sort of the one that's been keeping the train chugging forward, and um, I very much appreciate that. Rochester's community meeting will be tomorrow night, so I'll be holding that online and hope to have a, a fair number of parents. Um, we've communicated to parents in several different ways uh, over the last couple of weeks. Um, they know that someone's there. They know that their calls will be answered. I know that Wendy and I um, answer, respond to a lot of calls. Sometimes it's parents that just want to talk to us. They just want to be reassured that we've got this worked out or we have that worked out. Um, so that's been, uh, that's been very, uh, that's been, it's been enjoyable to do, to be able to say to parents, look, we're taking care of this. Um, and, and we promise you that it will, it will go well. Uh, Rochester has, um, as of today, and some parents are still uh, going back and forth. They haven't quite made their final decision, but as of today, we have 14 youngsters, um, joining Lindy in the virtual Academy. And we have three youngsters who are going to be homeschooled through the actual Vermont Homeschool Network. Uh, I'm anticipating that will change another time or two before we actually start. Um, I think that pretty well does it. I can, I can segue right into our new hire. How's that? Because I wanted to mention her. Um, as Jamie said, we were very fortunate. Our new teacher's name is Megan Donahue, and she comes from the um, Boston Public School System. Uh, thus, she's in the middle of finishing her quarantine, so we're not quite sure if she's going to make it with us the first day of school, but our fingers are crossed. Uh, we have a plan if she does not. Uh, Megan is very, very, uh, very well qualified. She's done a lot of work in inclusion. She's been an elementary science teacher. Uh, she's also an ESL certified teacher. She has a degree in special ed, and she has her master's in elementary ed. So she brings um, a depth of understanding about youngsters and um, education to our campuses that I think we're going to very much um, appreciate. So the Rochester teachers are in contact with her. Um, we spent some time today starting to get her room set up for her. Um, I'm very grateful to the collaborative nature of folks in our two schools because all you need to do is ask for something and it happens. So uh, we're going to be together tomorrow down at the Stockbridge campus for some uh, literacy and service. And then we'll uh, break up to our two individual campuses and, and do a little more work fine tuning our, um, our opening plans before people head out for a, for a four day weekend. Um, Lindy and I are talking about where we're talking about um, actually banning people from school on Friday, not allowing anybody to come to school on Friday, but saying it's a requirement that you have a four day weekend. So we'll see how that goes. Next um, <clears throat> Wendy, do you know about how many um, youngsters will be in the virtual academy at Stockbridge? Right now there's eight that are enrolled <clears throat> at Stockbridge uh, for the virtual academy. <laughs> Sorry, way more in person. 
Um, <laughs> and there's three, three homeschool students that are on the latest list as of right now. Is there anything? Is, that is there anything you guys need from the board um, to, to 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 make anything happen besides uh, a duct tape and and and, and some grommeting? I think just support and knowledge that we're really being clear with families on both campuses that only staff and students are allowed in the building. And I think that for some parents, that's going to be tough, but it's a safety thing and really trying to keep our, our bubble at school. Um, I know that'll be a hard adjustment for some families to not be able I, to walk in. I, and I, I, would agree, I would agree with Lindy. I think that's going to be the hardest part for folks to accept. I, I heard a rumor that um, um, outdoor time for classes might be a possibility to join. Is that true or not? That is not true. We haven't had that conversation, Ethan. It's not something I think we want to do because it still introduces, you know, different people into the pods that we're trying to keep together. Okay. That's, it's, it's going around the community that that's a possibility. So just so you know that. Thanks for the heads up. I did promise my staff today at Stockbridge that we would, <clears throat> people can come look from afar, but I really am considering the tents and extension of our building at this point in time. And we need to keep people safe. That's the promise we need to make to people. And we do that by, you know, con trying to control who comes in and out of the building. And no, tents. it's the same thing as security, but I just, I would get that word out. No, thank you. That's a good heads up. Thanks, Ethan. I can mention that tomorrow night in the community meeting. Is it primarily in Rochester? You um, think? I yeah, that's 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 where I heard it from two sources. Okay. So I can address that tomorrow they, night. It was just they thought it was a, a room. They thought it was possible. They didn't know that it was for sure. Okay. So just to make it clear, um, if I may piggyback on um, just a couple of uh, Carreras in Middlebury was really amazing to uh, donate. Um, we basically got, well, we got a donation from Home Depot um, from uh, Lori Novotny. Is that her name? In, yeah. Yes. It was a wonderful um, donation she arranged from Home Depot of all the buckets we needed. And then Carreras filled them up with cement. Um, uh, and Donna at um, Hancock Building was very, um, loaded, loaned us uh, the rebar bender so we could make the hooks. Um, and then Cricket McCusker um, and our crew, Cricket McCusker, Mike McDonald, um, Stacy Harvey, and then down at Stockbridge, it was actually kind of a wonderful community gathering of teachers, staff, and community members uh, to put the tents up. Um, I have to say it felt really great to be doing something physical <laughs> for this process. That's, I guess that's why I really I felt no problem about helping it. I just, to put my hands on something and, and all these other people clearly at the same way they just, we felt good about doing this. Plus, I have to say, you know, this is part of our merger documents, um, getting outside. And I hate to say the reason for it is COVID, but the fact is, I really hope that we um, get some lasting, um, I don't know what you want to say, but I hope this, I hope, I hope this sticks as far as getting kids outside um, on a regular basis at both campuses, because that is something we we really set as our goal for these these two campuses. I think there's a number of things, Ethan, that will come out of this time that we are working our way through together that we'll recognize are good and should be should be continued. I know at the Rochester campus faculty has started to talk about, hey, why you know, as I said, why haven't we done this before? Why couldn't we keep doing this? Why can't we extend on this? So um, I think those things will happen. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Lindy and Bonnie from a parent perspective, kind of totally separate from school board. You guys have done a really great job in getting information out to out to parents. Um, I'm also our older school, our older daughter goes to a different school district, and I have to say that the the information from you guys has been really clear, and you've definitely been right on top of everything, and it's been really easy to um, to transition. Thank you, Jenny. That Thank means you. a lot. Thank you, Jenny, it does. And I just wanna add one thing to Carl, in terms of your question, asking what we need, just a quick funny quip. We, we know in our fiscal system, we have two 
uh, community foundation grants for $9,000. We got a $4,000 one for Rochester and a $5,000 one for Stockbridge. And the thing that Lindy and I chuckled about when the first round came up, Lindy had time to write him. So she wrote for both schools and we, she got one for Rochester and Stockbridge came up empty handed. So the next round came around and I had time. So I said, you know what, I'm going to throw one in for Stockbridge and see what happens. And so we got a $5,000 one for Stockbridge. So we're laughing that she got one for the campus that I'm on primarily, and I got one for the campus that she's on primarily. So that's mixing. <laughs> if they only knew, we won't tell our secrets. No, we won't. <laughs> well, it's because you guys, you guys know each other better than you know yourselves. <laughs> Some days it feels like that. Some days we know we spend more time with each other than we do our spouses, I'm quite sure. <laughs> Which grant was that, Bonnie? I'm sorry. What was that grant again? It was. It's through the Vermont Principals Association. It's a community foundations grant. Okay. And then, in terms of virtual learning, just a quick update: we've finished staffing that. There's well over 125 students, K through eight that have registered SU-wide for Virtual Academy. And I would say it changes every day. It, it's slowing down a little bit, but I think people have made plans. Ray has helped with getting devices out to those families on Friday um, at their home schools. And it's, uh, it's going well. Teachers, it's great to work with a different set of teachers and make some new relationships and see some new faces and I think we're in a good spot. As, as I told those families, it's gonna take us a week to be able to just like in person to make any adjustments that may be needed, but feel pretty strongly about our plan for delivering instruction. Um, it'll just be about adjusting some accommodations that kids may need or families may need and support. Okay, does anyone else have any uh, COVID-19 questions for our administrators? Okay, then we'll move into uh, reviewing the uh, high school building winter maintenance status. So I forwarded you a report that we received, um, Bonnie and I toured um, with your lead custodian, um, Jesse, right? I got it right, please tell me. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Jesse. Yeah, Jesse, um, back in August on the 3rd, and Lyle put together a report for us. Um, Lyle worked at Visbit for several years as a consultant um, and now is the maintenance director up in the Champlain Valley um, Supervisory Union um, and so in Williston. And so he uh, put this together for us. It's a great report. It goes over each area that he recommends that we look to address uh, prior to winter. Um, it talks about we do have a leak in the roof. Uh, we are aware of that. That's something that we're, we've, Bonnie's reached out before and Jesse about how we can resolve that issue. Um, we're hoping to get that patched prior to winter. Um, there's talk about the underground tank of which I'll talk to you guys about later. Um, I've got some estimates about what that would cost um, to potentially get removed if we needed to. Um, he was just noting that that should be taken care of at some point. Um, he talks about uh, needing to insulate the boiler. We definitely need to have uh, Gaylords come out and review the boiler um, prior to the winter, which is typically something that we do anyways. Um, as you know, pneumatic controls are difficult. Um, Gaylord's someone that we're gonna try to use across the SU. Um, I've been told by Lyle, they're the best of the best. Um, and we have other buildings that still run off of pneumatics across the SU. So we're going to be looking to use Gaylord for that across the SU. Um, and uh, in general, it was good to have a review of the building to give us feedback on what we need to do. We know that we also need to um, get some heat sensors, as I mentioned previously, around the building to ensure that um, the building's being monitored just because it is a it is a building and the fact that we're turning the heat down to 55 if something wasn't was to go wrong we want those sensors to go off so we can get it fixed immediately so that the building doesn't freeze up um, that's the idea of the heat sensors and we plan on having someone um, go through the building daily 
um, just to check and ensure everything's operating well um, and ensure that there's no freeze ups or anything of that nature that would damage the building. Um, but we have got a plan in place to address that too. That was a recommendation from Lyle. Anything else, Bonnie, that I missed? No, I think those are all the high points. Um, the with these sensors you're talking about, um, I know that maybe for a uh, you know a building in this case you would want to look someplace else. But um, we've used these things. They're called home sitters, and it's a it's connected directly to a phone line and it has a temperature and water sensor and you would set that temperature high and low and also water and there and it's hooked into a phone line and it it calls a designated number um if it is tripped in one way or the other it's it's a home set sitter kind of thing but um maybe it would be useful in this type of application have multiple around the building since we do have phone lines in there too something to look into you know we definitely plan on having some type of sensor that yeah could warn us in the event that it was it you know that the heat went down or the parts of the building were getting cold uh, also it was talked about in there about um it's believed that we're due for another three-year inspection um uh, as far as the best goes and so my plan is for desi to contact andra and uh, make certain we get that taken care of through this fall Jamie, I didn't think about this till just now, but we might want to have a conversation at some point as we're starting to get these inspections done about how to get the two campuses lined up so that every year we're doing the same thing on the two campuses. It just seems like it would be easier and more efficient that way to keep track of it all. Yep, that makes complete sense. And maybe we should double check because with that engineering study, Andrew did come in and do a bunch of asbestos type things. I don't really know what that was titled under. If it counts as a inspection no, I, I really appreciate lyle reached out to her for me okay perfect i was yeah. just saying no, he he really did his homework on this and he also reached out um to the royal group about the sensors and recommended we call them about the sensors and i just want to remind everyone in the community lyle smith did this free of charge and he's more than willing to consult with us across the su um so he's a pretty great man and i want to just acknowledge him for that and i have sent my card um, from the SU, thanking him for his time. Um, one thing I noticed in the report, there was a comment about the uh, uh, server room and the uh, um, air conditioning being being kind of wonky. We are, you know, would, rather than, I mean, the, the recommendation would be to, to, to replace that unit. I would you know, think we should use that as a, as, a, as a reason to accelerate moving the servers out of that building into a space in, in either the elementary school or in the, the, the Stockbridge building or wherever. You know, I'll, I'll defer to Ray's, Ray's logic and timeline for that. But I just, it, it, you know, I, I agree that the, uh, the, 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 the dripping in the bucket system, that uh, Lyle's photo, so... Uh, <laughs> So uh, uh, wonderfully captured is is not the way to go, but I, I think that you know trying to you know move on from that server room is a better solution than than putting in a mini split. So uh, I'm not really clear on server rooms. Do they have to be at a certain temperature, a cool temperature? Um, and yeah, that the key is to make certain they stay cool. I mean, Ray can speak more. He can jump on. He's on the call. But if you're, you definitely if we're can get hot. If we're turning the heat down in that building, is it not sufficient enough just to have the doors to that room open so that I'm not worried about it for the winter, Amy. Okay. Just move yeah. okay. <laughs> so uh, this is Ray. Um, I didn't hear much of the lead up here. My apologies because I was on on the other call. Um, in Stockbridge, it was a power issue, and so the AC was down in the server room in Stockbridge from, I'm gonna say, tax day or what would have been tax day until fairly late in the year. And we survived that by keeping the door open. Given how the season is transitioning here, I think this will be fine. I assume you're talking about the uh, dead AC in the uh, mezzanine at the high school building. So, sorry, am I caught up now? Yeah. Um, Jesse had said that there were other wall mount acs that could go in place there uh, i don't believe we've tried that yet though we have been uh, monitoring the temperature 
So yes, uh, something over the time would, would be necessary, but not necessarily right now. Right, right. No, I was just, the, the, the report recommended putting in, you know, replacing and putting a mini split into that server room. And, and, and our comment, the board's comment was, gee, maybe we would not want to have a server room in that building in the first place. So that is so some, some of the other things. Yep, sorry. Some of the other things seemed like they were um, uh, more like ongoing uh, potential things, fixes that needed to happen, such as the panel board or that, that picture of the Federal Pacific electrical switch. Um, and I was kind of wondering that like things like that, um, should we be discussing or informing um giving this information to like the select board or any other vested um, group that has an interest in this asset um, as to if we're talking about trying to fix this, you know, these, these larger, like this. Well, I, I didn't bring those up as fixes because I didn't feel like it had anything to do with the shuttering of the building. Um, okay. And certainly I'm more than willing to go into, um, you know, what, what may or may not, be in regards to a purchase and sale in executive session. I have some other information to share to an executive session. Okay, so uh, around the building. So this report, with the highlights that you gave us, were were really what you you felt for this winterization project. That um, yeah, I tried to highlight the areas that he said to me. Okay, you need to do from winter. Um, he gave us other things that you know, if we get through the winter and the board still owns the building that we're gonna to need to look to do. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Does anyone else have any uh, other questions for uh, uh, the administration around the Lyle report or the winterization efforts? Okay, then uh, let's move on to the uh, social emotional data presentation. So I think you received two separate uh, documents from Bonnie and myself. One, my attachment was two, two documents. Um, you'll notice a slight difference because it uh, we use in Stockbridge what's called Swiss, which helps us track uh, just different uh, discipline issues as well as help target some of our social emotional needs for our kiddos and it's um, what you're seeing in that attachment is different uh, breakdowns um, for our entire school. Keep in mind, it looks really low and that's exciting because we did a lot of work around some social emotional supports and reteaching of expectations, but they're off also were no office discipline referrals from March 14th on. So, um, <laughs> It still gives us plenty to work with. What we do is we take this data in our PBIS group, which is a positive um, behavior intervention systems, and we use this to make goals for ourselves as a faculty. Um, sometimes around, for example, targeted ideas of reteaching expectations, the idea that when kids come back from vacation, they've kind of forgotten what the rules are. So you have to review those things. And um, that'll speak to page... Doo -doo -doo. Um, if you look at the referrals by month, uh, at the end, you will see that January and December are our, our high months um, of, you know, just behavioral issues. I wouldn't say they were all like most of them. If you look back to like the first page, really focus on, um, you know, disrespect and learning how to teach that in a better way and support kids with that. What we have done at Stockbridge is made one of our targeted goals to really improve and maintain our social and emotional well-being for our tier two and tier three populations, which means kids who may need some more social emotional supports than what every single student gets um, through targeted processes and practices. And we're using our data to be able to identify students of need that need those targeted supports. And we have quite an array of supports that we can provide uh, from something that's called a check-in and check-out sheet to something um, 
a, like it could be goal setting. It can also be some observation things. It could be some push and support. It's a wide variety of things. Um, with that comes training for staff and working with students as well. So that is kind of a rundown of most that of our- That wonderful. Can you explain the um, Sunday referral? Yeah, I think that's a typo. So here's our system at Stockbridge. I review all of them, but uh, Mary Dolan, who was our school counselor, is she is the Swiss guru who I actually had to call to ask for some help to walk me through how to print these reports. Um, so I just think that was a typo, meaning she probably put like the date in and it populated as Sunday. No one was at school on Sunday. <laughs> I promise you that. I just couldn't figure out where it was to go fix it and try and problem solve it. Um, just one thing in the problem behavior, it says uh -huh. the middle is disrespect and then there's M dash disrespect. Is, am yep. I reading that? Right. You are. What, so what is M disrespect? Yeah. We we break our problem behaviors down by minors and majors. Uh, so, the, the um, major. right. So the big M is the major, which means in most of these situations that it happened, you know, multiple times over with the same student. So after you get X number of minors towards. Uh, that same area, it translates, I believe it's four for us, translates into a major to really, uh, those are times when we start to provide some push and support. For example, we did, um, Mary and myself did some observation to see like what the student did, what the adult did to be able to really break down those situations a little bit better is one way we targeted that um, area. Okay, so um, any more questions for Lindy before I start? Okay, um, Rochester had not previously um, used a school-wide information system, which is which is Swiss, um, as Lindy referred to it. Um, but we were able this year to secure funding through a grant. The Swiss program has been purchased, and it is going to be implemented on the Rochester campus in this this pre this school year. So it, as Lindy talked about, it will be an important tool for us um, as we move forward, uh, basically trying to increase student achievement. It will enable us to sort of collect, summarize, analyze behavior, and make decisions. Stockbridge has been able to do that for the, at least the last couple of years, being a PBIS school who uses the, the Swiss system. Um, we have been we have been tracking our behaviors. We also break them into majors and minors. We've been tracking primarily the major behaviors um, because I could do that without a lot of difficulty without having a, an automated system. And you'll see from uh, August 28th, which was the first day of school last year, through March 13th, when when we all headed home, we had um, 16 major um, incidents. 15 of those involved physical aggression and one involved physical contact. Um, 15 of the incidents involved the male, one of the incidents involved the female. Um, and then there's other data that I put, put down there. In 13 of the incidents were in our K3 population and three of our incidents was, were in our four, six population. And then there's data there on uh, where the instances took place. Um, I want to be a little cautious here because without the system that we're following very tightly, um, I have faith in this data, but I'm not sure it's 100% accurate. I'm guessing there's some things that that I didn't enter. There's things, maybe a couple of things I didn't follow up on. So I'm anticipating that with the system this year, we'll be able to really make decisions based on um, accurate data. Previous to this, it's been more perception data, and perception data can tell you one story, but it's not really a good story to plan interventions and how you're gonna intervene. The other thing I particularly like about the Swiss system is it allows us to look at behavior through the lens of um, school-wide structures, school-wide interventions. And that is an extremely valuable lens to look through when you're trying to bring about change in a school on a large scale. Um, we didn't have any particular meaningful data for any of our minor uh, 
instances. I think without a system, without a data system where we're very specifically saying we are going to enter all instances of A, B, and C, teachers sometimes deal with the minor incidents themselves and then don't bother to report it, don't bother to get it into a system. So I think that will change and we'll have a better handle on our minor um, instances. The whole goal being to improve the culture, both academically, socially, um, in our schools. Uh, Tony, you mentioned um, Stockbridge is a PBI, PBIS school. Is Rochester? We are now, Jenny. We were not last year. There's certain things you need to do to get in, in, get in place before you can um, apply to be a PBIS school. At one point, uh, Rochester What, what is was, PBIS? Uh, positive Behavioral uh, Intervention System. Thank you. At one point, Rochester was a PBIS school some six or seven years ago, but then they let it they let it lapse. Um, it's really an integrated um, action oriented sort of system. You, you have to stay up to date with doing certain things um, with your school, with your staff, with your youngsters, with your community. If you want to remain a PBIS school. Um, my question is, uh, is there some reason why you're reporting to us? Uh, right now? Is this a annual report? Is it something just, I, I'm just curious. So Ethan, it was included in Mary Ellen's SU report. There was a data, data calendar that the SU mm -hmm. board approved. So all schools are reporting on social emotional data, baseline data in September. Okay. And then you're going to get your star literacy and math data in October. Excellent. And so, you, and that will again happen across the entire SU. Um, the idea be, would be that you can start to progress, monitor growth of your buildings as the year goes. So sorry, I obviously I don't remember. I mean, I looked at that um, schedule, but I, I don't remember it. Is this something that will just happen now or is it going to happen every three months, six months that we'll get a report? Uh, social emotional data, I think, is reported out of two or three times throughout the year. OK. Good. Thank you. The other thing I was going to say, I don't know that, that he would say it himself, but we're lucky that we're moving into the to the PBIS and working with Swiss because Jamie's quite knowledgeable about that. He does he does a lot of work across the state in those systems, and I think we're fortunate to have him with us as we take this next step forward. Thanks, Bonnie. Believe it or not, that's what fills my bucket. Not COVID nineteen. Yeah. I can I imagine. Like all you guys hear me talk about lately. I can imagine. Um, just a, another question. Uh, you sort of saying interventions and things like that. Uh, is getting outside ever considered an intervention? Like going for a walk outside. <laughs> the list is pages long, Ethan. Okay, um, but I just hope that that. Being outside and outside time might be included in that. It's what we call a break, summer scheduled, summer student directed with a signal predetermined by the teacher. It depends on age, usually, at least in Stockbridge. And it can be a wide array of things. And the great thing about this is you start to work through that. Um, what are successful breaks or interventions for students? Because you can see the difference. Mm -hmm. It's really a noticeable difference when it works well. Just a quick example, when you're looking at our data in those 16 instances at the K-3 cluster, uh, close to half of those were from one little guy, almost always around the beginning or the end of recess, and it was as simple as altering the recess time to uh, extinguish those behaviors. But without the data, we, we wouldn't be looking at that. The other thing that the form gives us when we're actually entering into the Swiss system is the day of the week and the time of the day. And it's amazing how many behavioral disruptions can be happening around a particular time of day or a particular day of the week. It's actually quite easy for the school to modify. So, Jamie, is this, is this, I, I, I just remember you talking in your interview process about changing, um, the need for special ed with, um, is this sort of related to that? Finding some ways that you can take care of problems in house, so to speak, so that Yeah, it's I mean, so it's really, the idea is that we're gonna start to become uh, a culture that uses data to make informed decisions. 
and that we're going to create a comprehensive menu of supports that we're utilizing and that we're implementing prior to reacting when we get to a crisis level and then we're reacting and often the only two that we are using it seems based on working with Don to analyze our current support system, which would be a special ed referral. Um, and what I worry about is that a lot of times gone on prior to that. And by the time we get to that point, um, often it's, it's really hard then to close the achievement gap because even if the student's struggling socially, emotionally, they probably missed a ton of instruction and foundational skills that then we're trying to catch up through intervention later in the um, later elementary grades. And uh, often that we find that the student then starts to have this perception that they're not a learner. So we're also having to try to work on that. So the hope would be that if we can get all these early interventions and supports in place and change our approach to universal instruction, classroom instruction, like Bonnie and Lindy both said, sometimes it's not even about an intervention plan. It's like acknowledging like, oh, my whole class is struggling at 10 a.m. What am I going to do as a classroom teacher to respond to that? And so that's the type of culture we're trying to build around data. It's not about I got you or you're not doing something right. It's like, let's use this to inform best practice. I think that's sort of an aside to a really, really good uh, implementation of Swiss is that it gives it gives teachers and administrators in the school, it gives them great hope because without this kind of a system, sometimes schools sit and talk about, well, you know, it's a family who struggles with substance. It's, there's been separations. There's been, we can't do anything about much of that. But what we can do a whole lot about is what time is recess going to be? How long is the math class going to be? What kind of cueing does this child need? All of those things are things that give us hope because we can do something about them, as opposed to sitting back and saying, well, this child's pretty lost because we can't do anything about much of what we think is impacting them. This is awesome. This is really great. Really, really good Two stuff. Thumbs up. This is great. Yeah. Yeah, it just sounds wonderful. I was a I was a special intervention poster child in my elementary <laughs> school days, so uh, um, uh, and some of it was good and some of it was terrible. Um, so I um, um, I just really appreciate the the care and you know like I know food can make a big difference. You know when they get food, how much food, what kind of food, you know, can makes a huge difference in a kid's life in a in a. And I don't know if, you know, relative to lunch, relative to snack time, all those kind of things. So good. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have uh, any questions or thoughts for our administration around uh, PBIS, uh, uh, multi-tiered systems of support and social emotional learning? Okay. 7.4. Um, very quickly, we... Uh, held uh, uh, a special meeting uh, earlier before this meeting where we conducted uh, three interviews um, for the interim board member position. The uh, results of those conversations we'll be uh, discussing in executive session. Um, the big thing we want to make sure uh, that uh, Jamie, we're squared away on and we've gotten the input from Dean on, and I know that we're kind of dependent on the towns setting their, their polling places and their polling times but we, you know, recall at our last meeting, we, we agreed that we wanted to hold, uh, hold the election um, on the, you know, in conjunction with the November election to get the replacement that'll take us through till May. Um, so we just need to get the information from you as to, you know, and from Dina as to what the warning would look like. Um, and you know, I've got time to get the warning together for your October meeting. My understanding is we'll be still good. The key is going to be for the folks to get their petitions done between now and October. That's why I got this on the agenda. Um, and I think it'd be helpful if we utilize uh, Front Porch Forum to get this word out that we need folks to complete their petition so they can get on the ballot. And then I can, in October, bring you guys um, the ballot and the warning and everything for that special election. Right, right. The biggest piece we were, the, 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 I was curious about or we were curious about um, was 
you know, can people can people start collecting those petition signatures when there hasn't been an official ballot warned or you know can they just get a form from the state department website or get a form from their town clerk and and and, and start doing that now so they have the paperwork in hand when we warn the meeting in october it's just it's that that I can pers- double check. You know, my understanding is based on our conversation previously around this that yes they can um and you know it would make if the board wants to take a formal action tonight to say that that indeed yes there's going to be a special election um then we could utilize that language to get it out on front porch forum yeah i mean we agreed we 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 agreed to hold the election i just didn't know if 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 town clerks could could give out petitions when it's not been a formally warned you know there's a formally warned position and that's all we were we were concerned about because yeah, I would like us not to have to have a special meeting. I would like us to be able to do exactly that plan you just described, where you you know you come to us and say, "Here's our ballot. Here's your warning. Your you know uh, the the petition window is is this this and that." And we put the 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 information about getting the petitions up on front porch forum and on the you know the the our our part of the SU web page and so on and so forth. But yeah, I would like us to you know I, I would like us to 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 get our ducks in a row so that we can warn everything and be prepared to to hold that without having to have a special. I'd suggest just to dot your I's and cross your T's if you just make a motion tonight that you intend to hold a special election for the vacant uh, vacant Stockbridge um, position on the November 11th. Uh, Is it the 11th? It was the 4th, sorry, November 4th. Third? (laughs) When's election day, Lindy? Yeah. It is November. You can tell we don't have a TV anymore. It's no Tuesday, November third, right? Yeah. It's important we advertise that correctly for a lot of different reasons. So I think if you take a motion like that, then we could get that out to the town clerks, and okay. uh, we could get it out on front porch forum, and then as soon as those folks do the petition, then we can get it on the ballot. <laughs> Great. I would entertain a motion that uh, 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 the board formally uh, uh, formally acknowledges that they're that they're going to have uh, we're going to have the uh, um, election for the the uh, board member replacement on the uh, November third election. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Let me get my little list up and go in order. Uh, Amy. Aye. Ethan. Aye. Jenny. Aye. Megan. Aye. I also say aye. We unanimously uh, approve a motion to uh, hold our election on the uh, in conjunction with the November elections. And we'll Thank notify you. the town clerks of that. And then um, I'll work with Dina. Once we get those names, we'll have a ballot and the warning all set for you for your next meeting. Great. So for the, for the public's knowledge, their petitions are due in to the town clerks by when? Uh, you know, really, it could be any day up to that that next meeting. So really, if so, we can put so the finish October, the, that warning. Um, so Monday, October, Monday, October fifth would be the, the day, so that it could be ready for our meeting Tuesday, October sixth. We yeah. should check the uh, town office's hours for Stockbridge on Monday. I can't remember what her hours are. I know they're not normal. Not- I just need the names from the town clerks on Tuesday the sixth because we can we can edit it right up until your guys right. are reading the ballot in the warrant. Okay, that's good to know. Can we get that out in the front porch forum or the Herald or wherever all places that we're putting this information out? Thank you. Yep. Jenny, you want to work on me with that? Sure. Uh, hang on. Is that is that you, Keith? We're about to have public comment. No, 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 it's not public comment. I just have a question. It's, 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 oh, okay. um, it shouldn't really be town clerks. It should just be the Stockbridge uh, town, correct? Right. I'm sorry, Keith, you're correct. Okay, that's all I want to clarify. I'm just so used to saying clerks because of these merged districts. I understand. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Um, okay. okay. Is there uh, any other conversation around uh, uh, around that? I, I I think we've we've, we've uh, been fairly clear about what we need to get done, and it seems like Jamie's on it. So, um, 
Before we go into our executive session, let's have our public comment. Um, we, uh, again, the uh, uh, we can uh, entertain public comment on the things that are agenda items um, uh, on the agenda. Um, you need to be a, a, a resident of, uh, 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 of Stockbridge or Rochester to uh, make a public comment. And I'm going to go down the list and give everyone an opportunity to uh, have at least one comment. Um, and by our, by our bylaws, comments are supposed to be about five minutes. So let's, let's try to stay as close to that as we can. So, hey, Carl. Really yeah. quickly, it's, it's Megan. When we go through each phone number, can we make sure that we're getting a list of all the attendees? I think we said in the last meeting that we were going to try to get a public record of all um, public comments and public attendees that are coming to the meeting. Okay, that's that that that, that is true. I probably I, I probably should have said something at the very beginning of the meeting. Got it. Gotten all the numbers to identify themselves. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to go through what I see for everyone who's on the phone is I see your phone number, the last two digits of your phone number and your area code. So I'll, I'll call you out. And if you have a, a comment you'd like to make on the things we've discussed tonight, uh, comment away. Well, they uh, so unmute, state their name and either say comment or no comment. So we have that record. Oh, good point. And whether you're a Rochester or a Stockbridge person. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, if you have a comment, if you, you yeah. Um, so the first the first person on my list is 802. Your number ends in 18. If the person who's at 802 star star 18 could identify themselves and. OK, thank you, Ethan. Um, all right. Uh, uh, 802 star star 38. I think that's that was Keith, wasn't it? Hey, Carl, it's us. Yeah. Um, I guess a couple of questions. So we went through the um, the interview process today, but that sounds as though that's null and void at this point. No, no, no. The interview process, you'll be filling a board seat until the, the November election. And you would be welcome to run for that board seat. So okay. you'd be participating in the meetings. For the next for the next couple of months, the feeling that we that we got from the towns um, was that we should hold the election and not just appoint. We should hold the election as, as soon as possible, and because we can do that without incurring a cost really beyond xeroxing some stuff to That's have the injunction with the November. Fair enough. And then the other question is, um, as I listen to everything about the high school in Rochester. I heard very little difference as to what's going on in terms of addressing the boiler and addressing the roof and addressing the USTs. Uh, I'm sorry, am I missing something? Uh, please explain. I, I don't mean to be rude. I just don't see a change. Uh, you know, the budget's now been passed. Um, you guys have, uh, you know, certainly. Uh, have a victory, uh, but the people in Stockbridge are not happy. Uh, so uh, what am I missing? Please explain. Oh, there, let me unmute. Um, well, for one, there is no space that's being, uh, that's being heated beyond the recommended 55. We're not using any part of that building for for uh, 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 preschool activities or art rooms or uh, 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 anything like that. So, you know, that's where we, that's where we captured, you know, the, the projected 20K that we took off the budget um, because we said, okay, we know that w we can estimate that we, we know for sure we're not heating any of that building for, 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 for occupation. Um, you know, the report went through and pointed out um, you know, where there's a leak, we haven't, um, you know, uh, uh, contracted with, the, the, this was just a, a, a pro bono report that was done by uh, uh, a person with a lot of experience and who runs, what did you say, Winooski or somewhere in Chittenden? I don't CVU, Champlain Valley. Okay. 
So we, you know, we 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 brought someone in to look and, and and identify some I some some things that that need to be addressed as part of trying to shut that building down. But that's you know that, that uh, I would say the biggest piece we're doing is is we're not you know when when it comes time to turn the boilers on we're not turning any of it on to seventy degrees or sixty eight degrees. Is there anything else, Jamie or, or or Bonnie, that I'm 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 missing about the the winterization plans and the differences? from this year from last year? I mean, no, I mean, we just, we're gonna do what we have to do at a minimum to ensure that the building is not gonna be damaged. I mean, well, so me that's question. the idea about all the recommendations we received. Well, let me ask you a question. Is there any way that a person of the public like myself can be privy to those meetings? So I can maybe ask some questions that could be, you know, uh, pertinent to what you guys are contemplating. Um, I do have some experience in dealing with this type of a situation. And I have additional questions. And I don't want to filter them through the board. Yeah, no, Keith, I'm always open to questions. I have community members, some who call me almost every other day and others who call me a couple times a month. So. Keith, as I've said to you before, I'm more than you. You haven't reached out yet, but please give me a call via phone, and uh, my admin assistant will schedule a time for us to meet. And certainly, any questions that you have um, about the building, I'm more than happy to discuss. Yeah, I'm I'm willing and able at any time to meet with you and your advisors. Um, you tell me when, and I will be there. Jamie, for background, Keith is Keith is a, uh, a a commercial property manager. He manages he uh, the three hundred and fifty million. Is that the number you? Used? Yeah, that's the number I recall from my notes um, of of worth of commercial property in in the Long Island area. And you know he he does that from uh, what looked like a pretty cool house in in in, in Vermont. So he he does have background. He does have experience, and and he just volunteered. So yeah. Please reach out. To Keith, him. I'll have uh, I'll have Christy get in touch with you, and we'll see if we can get something scheduled either this week or the first of next. That would be wonderful. I'd love to participate in this and take a look. Thank you. All right, let's move on to eight hundred two star star four five. Okay. The last phone caller is 802 star star 91. Hi. Hi, this is Caitlin McKinstry. Couple questions. Um, so, Jamie, you had mentioned that if the Rochester board wants the building, so is there concern that they aren't going to take it at this point? Because last it was talked about, they very much wanted the building. Well, I don't know what the board wants to say. I'll just say that I can't speak for the select board. So I was just trying to be as uh, neutral and impartial as possible. But I was choosing my okay. words very carefully. Okay. And uh, my second question is, so according to Amy, several meetings back, um, they were, the board was told that the high school building, the, the roof needs to be replaced. It would not go through another winter. So has the board made any provisions for this? Because obviously the roof is now still leaking and it is coming into fall. We're going to have another winter. We're concerned about the building being damaged. Has the board had any provisions for this since it's been brought up months, months, months ago um, and as a concern and we're told by somebody that it wasn't going to last another winter? <laughs> So based on this last um, review, uh, Mr. Smith felt like that that roof could just be repaired via patching and that it would be fine for them. So I can't speak to maybe what was stated before I came on board, but that's not the information I've been operating off of. Okay. Caitlin, I'd be interested to know what meeting you're d talking about because um, I do not recall that. Um, so I, I'd be very interested if it's something you feel I've said. I would I'd love to review that meeting to uh, to see what my um, my wording was. Okay. In my yeah, when I have some spare time, I'll go dig through the videos again, get your timestamp.
Whoop, helps when I unmute. Okay, thank you, Caitlin. Um, the, let's see, Ethan has no comment. That has made it through our uh, our uh, uh, list of public com public on the line. You skipped me. Oh, I I said star four or five before. I'm sorry, you must have uh, I, I I must have gone too quickly. But go ahead. <laughs> you probably yeah. did. I'm I'm a little slow. I, as usual, I forget what phone I'm on. Um, this is Joanne. This, this, this is you, Joanne, correct? <laughs> this is Joanne. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious. Are we not even gonna like bother with the 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 building committee report? How much money did we spend on that? Does anyone uh, know? Was that see well? They're thirty something when we took out the efficiency the 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 efficiency uh uh, uh of Vermont. That was like. It was like forty four thousand or something like that. Right, and there was like eight of it. I want to say there was eight of it or or, or eleven of it that that efficiency Vermont kicked in. Okay, so well, there, 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 there was okay. some. There was some offset from them, so I, I want to say. It, All it, right, it, so it, say it's thirty three thousand or whatever it is. So it has we're just we're valuable we're, information. What? It has provided us with valuable information in our administrators. It sounds like we dropped it, and now we're just going to bring in other people in to get different, which is fine. I just, no, I'm, my curious, I'm just curious, are we just not going to use that for anything, any information from now on, or we're going to have out, other outside people? Um, just so the public knows, that report was shared with the person I brought in. Um, in regards to utilizing it. And so when Lyle, he looked at that report and he also worked with three other uh, maintenance directors from across the state that are affiliated with Bisbet. Um, yep. And so all of them provided feedback in the information that I shared tonight with the board. Did they feel confident that that was in um, good information or did they feel like that was not a good report? No, they feel like it's a good report. No, they said that they okay. do good. Yep. Joanne, okay. this is, Joanne, I can add one piece too. We gave it to the uh, the engineers who came and looked at the um, at the HVAC system to try at the in the Rochester campus to get the uh, the HVAC system back up and running. And we're also using it. And Lindy, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we're using it at Stockbridge too to prepare. Uh, to help the uh, engineers prepare projects for it to be uh, paid for with the state HVAC grant that's coming out hopefully next week. That's right. Good. It, it seems to be a good point of reference, Joanne, for those people that are coming in to have a good starting place of where to start. Well, that makes me just, feel good. Yeah, I like. I'm glad that that we didn't waste that money. And I guess my question is, there's an emer. We, you were talking earlier about an emergency with the air. Flow, I maybe in the pre K room or something or preschool room, and so it has to be done quick and it may not be done till next week. Well, didn't we know this in the report that it was bad from a year and a half, two years ago? And why would it be an emergency now? Oh, the way I'd answer that, Joanne, is it's is it's more of an issue at this point just because we need to have as much adequate fresh air in our rooms as we can, given the whole situation with the virus. So, um, if it was an emergency, I'm I'm calling an emergency with a small e in that there's a very strong desire to get more fresh air into that room before we bring youngsters in next week. And okay, that makes sense. One thing I, I would say, Joanne, is that it's also important to understand we made reference to it kind of sideways earlier, but the like there there's so official there 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 there's 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 state money to redo and to 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 upgrade and, and fix HVAC systems because with with COVID there's a, a real interest in having right with Phil Strait going on. Yep. So we're, we're using so it was actually our timing was good that we waited. Right, right. So and that, yeah. so we're not, it's not so much that we're putting aside that report and saying, okay, we're done with that. What we're trying to look at and what, why Jamie's report and, and brought the maintenance guy in was because we have to get these things booked and organized and, and, and spend that COVID money because that COVID money goes away at the end of the year. And so right. we do the most we can to address and use that report to help us target things that we can fix with CARES money and with COVID money while, while you know, 
you know, while the while the fixing is good, so to speak. So I don't right. think. So are other schools using those COVID? We're not like saying, okay, well, we're done with that conversation, fiddle dee dee. We're trying to say, right, that right. We need to pivot and fix this this stuff while we can get some Fed money to do it. That's what right. that's. And are other schools using their their CARES money and their COVID money for building repairs, or are they using yes. it for or HVAC they are? system? Yeah. Yeah, there's there's okay. there's the efficiency Vermont money was totally targeted to HVAC systems. Okay, good. All right, that's good. Um, and my la when will you announce who the interim is going to be? We're going to have that conversation in an executive session um, right um, after the meeting. We wanted to have public. We 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 decided that we would have the public conversation or the public comment now, um, just so you wouldn't have to sit here and stare at at a blank screen for the half hour or whatever we have that conversation i as appreciate well. that i appreciate that and will you announce it at tonight or will you how when will we know uh we would if, if we made a decision we can't make a decision in executive session so we would come out of executive session and and formally make an announcement or formally say whatever it is that we ended up deciding i i, I can't can't say what that would be until we go through the meeting but i would imagine we'll make an announcement and we would we would do okay. that, and we'll probably make sure it gets put up on, um, you know, on the the uh, SU web page as well. You know, it'll be in. Okay, could you put it on the Rochester Stockbridge page, the uh, Rochester Stockbridge RSUD page, or whatever on Facebook? That would be really helpful. Okay. Thanks. All know. right. Have a nice evening. Yep. Bye. No worries. Thank you, Joanne. You have a nice evening as well. Thank you, Joanne. Oh, Carl, I have a all right, so we have been through a round of public comment. We're going to go into executive session. Do we have? Paul? Yes. Can I ask one more question? Oh, sure, Keith. I'm sorry. Um, so I understand it's going to be some state funds available. Now, none of the state funds are going to be utilized to do any repairs on the Rochester High School, correct? That's correct. Correct. Okay, so I just want to make sure that that's clear that we're not there's no funds being requested for the HVAC um, units as they Correct. pertain to the uh, Rochester School District High School. The focus is on the elementary school and that that's safe for students and staff. No, no, that's fine. That's good. That's all good. I just want to make sure. Okay, so. Thank you, Keith. Um, we are going to move into executive session um, to discuss uh, confidential uh, attorney-client uh, communications. So I would entertain a motion to enter executive session uh, uh, for confidential attorney-client communications, uh, including our uh, attorney, David Ruff. I'm sorry, I probably pronounced your name wrong, as well as our uh, administration. So moved. I think we skipped over board comment. I don't know if anybody has any comments. Well, we, but I think we skipped over it. We did it earlier. Well, we oh, did. Okay. I must have missed it. Uh, um, Carl, you board comment you'd like to make? Um, I guess the only thing is that um, we still have the the survey that's out there. So far, we've gotten twenty four responses. So it's going to put out another um, plug for people to fill out the survey. Yeah, let's do that, and let's make let's make sure we talk about that at our October meeting. Because we've been so busy trying to get the schools open, I think we've all your work we've kind of dropped. We thought we would get that squared away before, you know, summer ended, and we. I'll have make a note now for the October well, meeting. It's still out there, so I don't think there's anything we need to discuss right now. Anyways, I just wanted to mention. Right, that it was right. I just, I, I just want to make sure that that we think about it. At, we, we think about it in, in advance of the October meeting, and we don't kick that can down 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 the road another month because we forget about stuff. Yep. So, um, Carl. Okay. Carl, yeah. this executive session is one of those that requires uh, two motions. Yeah, it's one where you need to make a uh, finding that premature general public knowledge will place the board at a substantial disadvantage first, and then you go into executive session uh, to discuss attorney-client communications made for the purposes of rendering professional legal services to the board. Okay. <laughs> this is why he's the attorney and I'm the guy in the t-shirt. Yeah, and I'm sorry. Last time you almost, you did it right, but for the wrong reasons, so. <laughs> so did you get that language, Jenny? <laughs> I have it right here. If someone wants to say so moved, uh, I would I would suggest that the board make a motion 
that uh, disclosure of confidential attorney-client communications uh, made for the purposes of providing professional legal services to the body would uh, place the board at a substantial disadvantage if uh, premature, if the public learned about it prematurely. So moved. Do I hear a second? Uh, okay, a motion has been made and seconded to uh, uh, consider material that, what Mr. Ruff said. <laughs> um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, I aye. can't vote. I have no idea what you're, I was off saying goodnight to my son. Ah. Going into executive session. We're, 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 we're making a motion that we're about to hear information that if it was uh, prematurely disclosed to the, to the public would put the board's interest at risk. We need to make that motion and then enter executive session. So we were having a voice vote to approve that motion. Thank you. Okay, so the motion has been uh, passed to do that. So now I would entertain a motion to, to uh, uh, enter uh, executive session to hear a confidential attorney-client communications made for the purposes of providing legal services to us. So moved. Seconded. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor of going into executive session signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, um, so at 9.34, the board has come out of executive session. Um, we are going to uh, entertain a motion. David, if you could give us our language. Sure. I, I recommend that the board consider and, and uh, make the following motion. A motion to commence uh, the planning and engineering work with Bannon Engineering and Du Bois and King uh, for subdivision of the Rochester High School with initial costs not to exceed $5,000. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. A motion has been made and seconded to uh, commence planning on the subdivision of the high school from the elementary school with Bannon Consulting and Dubois and King. I think I got those names right. Uh, all those in favor, um, I'm going to go through the, the, the roll. Amy. Aye. Ethan. Aye. Jenny. I refrain from voting only because I work for Du Bois and King. Your abstention is noted. Megan. Aye. Uh, Carl also votes aye. The ayes have it. Five to zero to one extension, one abstention because of a conflict of interest. Thank you, everybody. I would now entertain uh, David. Thank you so much for your. For thank your, you, everyone. Have a yeah, good thank night. Thank you, David. And, uh, you can thank go have much. a well-deserved uh, uh, beverage of your choice because you've been very helpful. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Have a good night. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. I would now entertain a motion to uh, uh, enter executive se uh, session to discuss a personnel matter and uh, uh, or to, to discuss personnel interviews. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Ray, if you uh, come out of executive session at 9.57, um, I want to first of all commend all our board members for their uh, endurance. For those of us that were doing interviews, we're going into hour five. So thank you, everybody. Your, 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 your yeoman work is, is very appreciated. Um, the board has uh, come out of uh, executive session with a, uh, a recommendation. I would entertain a motion that the board appoint Keith, and I'm going to probably mess up the name again, but it's Spolzecki, and I hope that's, that's, that's uh, close. Keith, I'm sorry if I, if I butchered your name in public. Remember, I got called Carl Grope um, a lot. So um, because of my last name being mispronounced, not because of something else. And this aside suddenly became a terrible, stupid story. I, I apologize for rambling on like that. Um, in any case, I would entertain a motion that the board appoint Keith to uh, uh, fill out the, the uh, term until the results of the uh, November 3rd election are known. So moved. Do I have a second? S second. Second. A motion has been moved, uh, has been made and seconded that we uh, uh, appoint uh, Keith to be our interim board member. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I, uh, the, the eyes, the, it, it is carried by voice vote unanimously. The eyes, um, I will reach out to Keith in the morning. And, uh, if, uh, Ray or someone can make those changes on the WRVSU page so that it, 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 it shows his appointment, uh, that would be good. 
Um, I don't believe we have any other business other than I really need to uh, have a bio break. I think we're all done. Can I entertain a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Seconded. Seconded. has been made and second. All those in favor of adjourning signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, everybody.